In this episode, I team up with Jason Medcalf. We fit out a car, build a boat, and head in search of a fishing destination we've only ever seen on a map. Some of our equipment and much of our ability is put to the test, as very little goes to plan. Why is there purple stuff pouring out of the car? Stick around to see if this is one adventure where Jason and I failed miserably. Oh, oh no! Yeah, God. No! Yeah! Oh, no! <laughs> What fun is this? This show is proudly brought to you by Mercury Marine, BCF, ARV, and Spotter's Sunglasses. Jason and I are fishermen, and in our spare time, we love dreaming about spots we've always wanted to fish, and this time, we've decided to go one step further. Trick up a car, get a project boat, and get to some of those spots we've only ever dreamed of. Mate, you, sometimes you've got to get the right tools for the job. Mate, I can sort a boat out, but I reckon we're going to need some expertise with right. this car. And I've got an idea. All right, let's do it. Our biggest risk on this expedition will be the fact we are towing a boat into unfamiliar territory and we are only travelling in one car. This means we need some professional four-wheel drive assistance and we know exactly where to find it. We can get you sorted out. Vehicles out there. Andrew has a solid plan for the vehicle, and right, this involves so lighting, off, suspension, yeah, winching play. capabilities, and more. And Jason nods a lot like he understands exactly what Andrew is talking about. So we have a plan. Now, our plan is I'm going to stay here and keep these blokes honest, like we'd even know what that is. You are now in charge of part B of the equation. Head north and make sure the project boat is ready to go. Thanks, Andrew. No Pleasure. See you, buddy. See you in a bit. All right. He's, right. Got, he's got no hope. <laughs> this will be the good bit. That's right. The next yeah. bit is going to be rough as guts. While the ARB crew get stuck into the work, Jason now heads to see the team at Polycraft, renowned for making unbreakable plastic boats. Hey boys! Nick up again. You must want something. <laughs> <laughs> Jason now has to request a 4.5 metre boat be made that will get us up creeks and also offshore. The beauty of these boats is they are made from a moulding process using super tough polyethylene. That means we shouldn't be able to break this one. Well, there it is, Jace. We'll fit it out. <laughs> Off you go. Hey, boys. No worries, mate. Get you later. And it's time now for the acid test. Let's go and see what Andrew and the crew have done to the vehicle. That is awesome. Check out that. And uh, she's considerably higher than she was. A little bit, a little bit in. taller too, Nigel. Yeah. So it's a 50 mil lift, two inch yep. lift under it. Uh, all done to support the weight of the uh, the bull bar and the brand new winch that you've got on the front there yes. as well. So that'll help you up on the on the dunes of the pulling the boat through. Nice, nice uh, little lighting system, just a little bit better than what I had on before. Just a little, yeah, yep. That's our new ARB intensity lights, so LED. Yes. That's gonna turn the, the night into day for you. So. We've also replaced the suspension for you, Nigel. So in here, we've got a full new set of coil springs and new set of shocks in the front end. Same in the back end, but we've done it to hold the weight of the boat for you as well. Awesome. So. Nigel, I've put in here a set of the ARB new Tread Pros for you and our full winch recovery kit as well. Well, where you're heading, you'll need every bit of help you can get. Let's get the show on the road. That's right. Enjoy the trip, Nigel. Before heading north to pick up Jason, I need to pick up supplies, being that we are living off-road for some time. We need some quality camping gear and this is the place to find it. A few swags and other essentials, a little advice, and I'm back on the road to find Jason the boat. Just on our way to Bundaberg now to pick up Jason. I've got two significant issues in mind now. One's this weather, which when we're gonna go off road, this could pose some significant threats for us. And the other is what sort of boat are we gonna find when we get to Bundaberg? I've left Jason in charge of this part of the project. And experience suggests that when Jason's in charge, anything can happen. Mate. Check it out. Looking good. Look. Well, going, I've mate. come to the party. Mate. Surprise me in a good way. Surprise you. Come and have a check this out. Hey, Nigel. How you going, mate? Yeah, mate. Yeah. Buddy. You got your safety boots oh, on. Oh, mate. Awesome. All right, guys, on the back there, we've got the Merc four stroke tiller steer. You've got um, Lawrence C uh, Sander there, HDS, and up the front we've got a motor guide, 55 pound thrust electric for you. The boat itself, 
We tricked it out a little bit. We've put some extra storage in the center for you, whacked in some extra storage in the back as well, and filled the back of the boat with foam, so now it's in level flotation. That makes it nice and safe. Under the floor, we've got a 50 litre underfloor fuel tank. The electric motor battery can be housed in there as well, and the boat's sitting on a dual axle trailer, so it should get you there and back. Now comes the bit we've been waiting for. The trek north begins, and the weather is looking far from promising. Little do we know that these storms will leave a trail of bushfires burning to our south as we head on towards Rockhampton for an overnight stay. Thankfully, the weather at Rocky is looking a lot better. We stopped overnight in Rockhampton last night and for a very good reason that this place is the gateway to an awesome off-road fishing district to the north, east and the west. Today we use Rocky as a bit of a, a zone to re-prep the boat, get our last minute supplies, find out any last minute information and then we hit the dirt and the sand to the east. Righto, chuck us some stuff. Rockhampton is now a first class fishing destination for travelling anglers. It is a net free zone and I've previously found that the barramundi and threadfin salmon fishing here is world class. As a travel destination it is perfect as it caters for the whole family with its rustic charm, shopping, travel and fishing options. Being that it's closed barra season at present, our plan is to explore the immediate fishing options to the east. But first we have to get some permits from the local ARB shop. Yeah, mate, Nodge. Blair, mate. There you go. There you go, Blair. Blair. It's Jace. 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 Yeah, well, yeah, we need to get permits to access the dunes of Byfield National Park, and Blair at ARB deflates us somewhat by letting us know that the sand is currently very dry and soft, and we have virtually no chance of towing a 4.5 metre polycraft into the beach with only one vehicle. Yeah. Thanks, Blair. All right. Thanks, buddy. We may be calling you yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. The road now takes us northeast of Rockhampton and into Byfield National Park. And before long, we're on the dirt, which means it's time to check the load we're carrying and make some adjustments. You can see already, in a short space of time, how much dust has coated that motor. And the bad news is it's going right into those vents. So if you want to go and do a few hours on the dirt road, sucking a lot of dirt into there. In the moment, you want to put her in the water and start sucking water through the motor, that's all dirty water, so it's not that good for the motor. And this, for the sake of a couple of seconds of the good old duct tape, it's gonna help that. You just gotta remember, let's take it off at the other end. No telltale means our boarding gets ugly really quickly, but that is gonna help us keep a nice clean flow through the motor. Now I'm going to find my partner in crime who's decided to go off bird watching or something. Nowhere to be found when the work's happening. You right there? Yeah, good mate. Thanks for help. Oh, good. Yes, we're getting real now. And you know what, Jace? I reckon these guys at ARB, I think they got us because we got mates that have got no idea about fishing. And at the moment, when it comes to four driving, we're exactly like <laughs> them. So we've had no expertise, but we've had help behind the scenes. Yes. We wanted to get on the beach with the boat, and everybody, including the ARB guys, have said the current state of the dunes, it's not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. They said, uh, in one car, maybe we come with you, which is not gonna happen. So they said, yeah, you're not gonna get through. But we've got another plan in mind. We're going to see both sides of Nine Mile Beach. Let's go find a camp. <laughs> it's time now to find a good camp for the night and prepare for the unknown waters we take on tomorrow. We've bought the right camping gear as it takes a short time to set up camp, get dinner sorted and settle in for a night's rest. We are up early and with breakfast, plan our approach for the day. The plan is to find a place to put the boat in at Corio Bay and then navigate our way through the estuary, out through the heads, and then on towards Nine Mile Beach. Beautiful. Cool. All right, now we've got to figure out where we're going. We're finally in the water now. This isn't quite part of the plan. We had hoped to put this boat in on the beach, 
second resort, put it on the ramp. The trouble is now, we've got a really long, shallow section to get to the mouth of the system and out into the ocean, and we've never set foot on these waters, so to speak. So it's gonna be interesting, and a little bit of trial and error. Fortunately, the tide is high, and more water makes the trip easier. We navigate a few rock bars and sandbanks, and before long, get to see the ocean. It doesn't take long past the headland to find there's plenty happening out here. Oh, Jace, there, there, there. That is a huge school, busted up too. <laughs> Active fish, yes. We just had to stop here. The plan was to try and get around the headland. Nine Mile Beach is further up that way. But when you're red-blooded anglers and you drive past so many birds diving in the current rich waters, you kind of got to have a cast, Jace. Mm. And I reckon if you drive this motor and I cast, <laughs> it sounds I'll awesome. see what's out there. For you. That should get the job done. Right, eh? Oh, yes! Yeah! Yep! Woohoo! Oh, yeah! Listen to that sing! <laughs> yes, Jason. Here he is. He's a decent size, uh, good match. Gina, Mackie, mate. Yeah. Get him in there. Oh, there he is. Nice work, Jason. Oh, buddy, look at him go. What a cool bait fish profile. The idea out here is all of these predators are out hunting for just stray bait. Like they, a, they're trying to gather the bait, but then it's those ones that leave the pack that they just pick off. And we're trying to make the lure look exactly like that one that's strayed. I reckon this one fell for it. He certainly did. All right, mate. Yep. I'll let him go. See you later. That's pretty and cool. And there's a bucket load more of them going up there. Looks like this tuna activity has started to dwindle. Maybe this tide's put them a little bit deeper, but our plan is to get up this coastline. So we're gonna run up, see if we can find this beach, hit a headland or two on the way, or whatever fish activity stops us. Hold on, Jace. Yeah, mate. The headlands on the way to Nine Mile Beach look well worth the fish, but we can't see much surface action, so it's time to jig some soft plastics and metals to see what's on the bottom. Yeah, that's hot, buddy. Go, Jace. Go, Jace. Oh, yeah. Oh, hold him, hold him, hold him, hold him, hold him. Make him low! Hold him. I'm going to get the net. <laughs> get the net. <sighs> still there? Yeah. Still got him, mate. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Reef critter. It's a sweetie. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. Look at that. Look at that. That's a good one too. Oh, don't they pull hard. Oh, mate, cracker. He's a good one. Mate, he's, uh, they, uh, he, first thing he wanted to do was get me back in that reef. And he very nearly did. The old grassy emperor. I was known as the sweet lip because they're kind of tasty. They yummy. Yes, and this one, being yummy, it's probably going to be good tonight. <laughs> he's coming back to camp. <laughs> Sorry, mate, we do have ice on board. We're going to look after it. And this is going to be grade A dinner tonight. Oh, yeah. Oh, awesome, Jace. Good old twisty. One of Jason's. You actually taught me how to use these lures many, many years ago. The uh, the Halco twisty, the trick a lot of it is, is we're drifting that way. Yep. We've got to cast in front of us and hop it back to us. Because if you hop it along behind you, you it tends to back. stay there. No, fair enough. Well, look at that, mate. That's a really good start. And now, on a day like this, we've got the whole place to explore. Yeah, baby. We've reached the top of the tide and the activity level has really dropped off. So it's a good time to start exploring. And there's Nile Mile Beach there. We wanted to see the outside of it, and we're about to do exactly that. A lot of Oops, bait, a look at the bait. Just been running the beach and straight away seeing life. There's some really big bait balls cruising up and down this beach with a few big sharks on them, and we're hoping to maybe find another predator. There's just looking for shadows. The bait balls are easy to spot, very big, dark, circular patches, and they are just bait balls, tightly condensed, to try and get away from would-be hunters. So what makes one bait ball look different to another is that predators go into that bait and, and what and it moves them around, and the fish basically, bait fish are trying to get away from them. Well, I mean, you don't want to be staying right in front of a predator. So when you iron off these bait balls, when you see one that's all spread out, and you'll see, all of a sudden, you'll see a move inside that uh, bait ball, pretty much that means there's a predator in there chasing and uh, hunting those fish in that bait ball. So what we're trying to do is we keep an eye out for where that is, and that's where we're putting the plastic. 
Look at that one over there, Jace. Oh, there's something on the outside of the. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yep. Short. Oh, I don't know. He's pretty close. He was. He was hanging out from them. Yep, yep. Yes. Oh, he missed it. Oh, go again. Oh no. Not seeing any other shapes. I'd actually go a tiny bit further in, Jace, because a lot of the shadows I'm seeing, they're right up on that ledge on the beach. Well, you're happy for me to go in there. You just tell me if I'm going too shallow, my friend. Yeah, look at hey, there, there. Stop. There's fish on the back of it. I have a shot, mate. Oh. Yep, He's on you. Got him. Got him. <laughs> got him. Big jeet. Big jeet. Yes. This is the type of fishing that really inspires Jason and I because we get to watch fish behave. We just get to learn so very much. You get to see what they refuse. You get to see what turns them on and what they'll eat. And in this case, we've recycled quite a few lures. We've gone through metals. We've gone through bigger profile lures. And we've gone now to a, a smaller soft plastic, put it on the bottom. And as they got close enough, popped it up and started winding it. So it looked like they'd spooked it. Oh, jeez. These fish, pound for pound, the toughest fish in the ocean. This one hasn't hit second year yet. Oh, we're doing now. Jace has driving me around after this fish. I don't want to put too much line out in the water because what it does is it increases the water pressure on that line. In this case, the leader's only 20 pounds, and the further that this fish gets away from me, the more weight starts getting put on that leader. And one sudden head shake when it's a long way away from me. Can pop that line, which means Jace is going to have to keep me as close as possible. You're right, Nige. You want to move to the left or the right, mate? Ah, spot on. Good line. Oh man. Wow. Sudden change of direction. Here we go. He's going to go. See line, Jace? Yeah. You know, as we're getting closer. Very, very powerful fish. They'll very often live in and around the headlands here. It's what we started targeting this morning pressure edges where there's current pushing into reef very often you find fish like your giant trevally will sit there because it also holds bait but shows you that they'll also get out and cruise the shallows opportunists where there's food they'll go coming up there he is the size of this thing jace oh jesus gotta watch there's a big extension on the back there he is here got a towel mate got a towel yeah, it's a tail. That's a, some serious tail fits there. I'm doubling the tail over. <laughs> Grab the jig head. Got him! <laughs> oh, oh, yes! <laughs> yeah, baby! What a Woo. That. Oh. <laughs> Far out. <laughs> the man hug. Wow, oh. that's why we do this. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of fish, my friend. They're very light gear. <laughs> They're suddenly worth hiking in and not knowing where we're gonna fish, where we're gonna put the boat in. <sighs> Getting boats are ready. That's pretty good pre-fish for the beach, because tomorrow yeah. we're gonna be running that beach on the car and we might bring we're some in in gear. <laughs> bigger gear. Yeah. Yes. That is a cracking GT. Have a look at that. The giant trevally. And hard to think, they do get a lot bigger than this. But I'm kind of glad that this one wasn't any bigger than this, because that's a good solid 30 minutes of battle. And to think that a metre of water, two of these were cruising a beach, just looking for an easy feed and something, something to chew on. They thought they got one in the way of a, a little soft plastic. And this fish is way too good to catch just once. It's about to go back, but one of our coolest, coolest predators, the giant trevally. I never get tired of playing with our big apex predators like the giant trevally. Just have a look at that fish. Big proud fins, a big deep body, massive tail to give them that propulsion and speed off the mark, and those big pectoral fins give it such good balance. It's got that big mouth armed with ferocious teeth. Fantastically big eye, gives it a panoramic vision. So good at hunting. This one's ready to go. And it is done well. I'll see you later, mate. Off you go. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. What is it? Oh. Oh. oh, Queenie, I think. Yes. Oh. 
<laughs> Queenie? Queenie. Oh, it's work, Jason. Yes. Woo. Oh, no, oh it's, it's not a queenie. It's a herring. It's a giant herring. Yes. And these things go like, oh, oh yes. 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 Oh, yes. Woo. I was thinking, didn't think it was a queenie when it died. Ah, these things are bullets when they go. This is beautiful. There's so many different species of fish feeding on those bait fish. This one's one of my favorites because that thing, apart from the fact that they get aerial, they peel line so quick, they're beautiful fish. These things go. So what we're doing with these, these plastics, a lot of the times these actual predators are actually sitting in the bait. What we were trying to do is we get that plastic in close to them, let it sink, and then when that fish looks like it comes to the bait, you move the plastic really quickly so it looks like the predator is actually scared a bait fish, which instantly gets the instinct of these predators to sort of go, oh wow, that thing's scared of me. Oh, oh no. No. Maybe oh. I'm gonna eat it. But that giant herring, they're notoriously actually hard to land because they have an upturned mouth. But that thing was a monstrous giant herring. Oh, oh. I would have really liked to have caught that because I haven't caught one for a while. And those things are awesome. No. Yeah. Ouch. That oh, look, 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 coming, 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 coming. Big tuna. Cast now, man. You've got to cast now. No. He's on me, he's on me. Yep. Oh, eat it. He's, yep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that actually wasn't the tuna. I think it was another no, a long tom. A long, another. Uh, herring. Herring. <laughs> Those are big long tails. Oh yeah. Big long tails. Wow. This, it's all happening. This is what angling's all about. Having an absolute blast. And sight casting <laughs> to fish is the ultimate when you're a bit of a sport fisherman. Wow. They were big long tails. They were big long tails. When I hit when I threw it out and the long tails came up, all of a sudden this giant herring appeared and uh, long tails kept going. And I've just hopped it and hopped it and hopped it. And there's a long tom, ah, giant herring. I think it's a giant herring. Ate it right in front of the boat. Oh, I think this is a permit. No way. Big yellow t fins. You're kidding me. Is it a permit? It looks like a, it's either a permit or a golden trevally. <laughs> You're How kidding. much fun is this? No, why well, you'd you'd take uh, you'd take that over the herring every day of the week, wouldn't you? Oh, I tell you what, two, the herring and the permit are probably two of my favourite species. They're the difficult species to catch, and to have one on one cast and pull out, and then hook with this on the next <laughs> cast, you know you're in some pretty cool country. Yes! <laughs> Put it there. Yeah, man. How cool is this? One of the exceptionally hard fish in the ocean to catch is the permit. Snub nose dart, permit, whatever you want to call them. Just a good sport fish. Well right. done, my friend. Wow. Well, there's been a lot of kilometers and a lot of driving and a lot of bouncing and dust. We've seen Queenie's jump, we've had jumping herring, we've had massive giant trevally, we've had tunas, and on my beach, has turned it on. How cool is this? You just never ever get tired of seeing them. I only caught my first one on fly not that long ago. You see another one totally unexpected to catch one of these here today on a soft plastic with relatives on the other side of the ocean. We've got a couple of different varieties in the Australian waters. This one grows to be one of our bigger ones, known as oyster crushers. Yep. Obviously, and... snub nosed dart, which you can see very blunt faces, very much spend their time hunting around shallows like this, eating very much crustaceans, crabs. They will eat a bait fish. Obviously this one, fruit, they do like eating a bait fish. And one of the quicker fish off the mark that you can hook. Mate, I'm so impressed to see that. <laughs> That's cool. What a special fish. I tell you, he is so ready to go. There you go, buddy. That is so cool. Yes. Permit. On nine mile, I didn't expect we'd catch one of those. No, no, to jump a uh, giant herring off and then next cast put it in a permit. Special place. That's how you roll.
That's how we roll. I'll tell you what, there's another fair bit of nine mile to go. Show me how you roll up the, the next bit. Oh, oh yeah. am I driving now? No, 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 I'll drive. You can keep going. I think while you're informed, you just keep casting. <laughs> that was awesome. Yes. Cool. <clears throat> the happy dance night. With the tide dropping out and the sun starting to fall, it's time to begin heading back home, stopping only to have a cast at signs of feeding fish. Yep, yep. Oh. Still there? Yep. It's going straight at me. That's a big school, Big school, When you... When you when you're expecting a big GT and something hits you with this sort of gear, you just whine. I'm like, it's coming at me, it's coming at me. We kind of had no choice. <laughs> so on our way back, we're kind of getting blown back uh, from the beach. Uh, we stop on these headlands. The reason why we stop on here and we look for pressure points, and pressure's where the tide is hitting the headland. So there's lots of headlands, but they don't all hold bait. Where that pressure, where that tide is pushing against it, whirls up those currents and the bait fish actually get caught in those currents. And that's where these little predators uh, fly in and uh, get a feed. Now I've th thrown that guy in there. So that one actually is just a, what they call a stick bait. So it just sinks a bit and I'll work it nice and slowly. And normally a big GT or a big queenie or mackerel, but in this case a schoolie, which I'm not unhappy about because they taste all right too. So this guy here might join us for dinner. The afternoon breeze is now pumping. We've seen Nine Mile Beach from the ocean side. It's been highly entertaining. And now back to the creek, back to camp. Start planning for a big day shore base tomorrow. That's going to be the real test. Yeah, that'd be fun too. Just that we get there first. We're gonna get home. Let's get back to camp. <laughs> the tide is a lot lower than when we came through the river this morning, and suddenly we are faced with a huge expanse of shallow water, rock, and fast dropping light. It's been a huge day of travel by sea, and we are almost home. All our attention now turns to getting to the beach tomorrow using only the vehicle. So today, my friend, we have a bit of a challenge on, don't we? Completely out of our comfort zone. Today, we're going to uh, leave the boat here. We're going to head over those sand dunes, which is going to be a bit of a challenge. But we're going to have a crack at those fish off the beach that we saw yesterday. Let's work out breakfast first. I reckon we work out breakfast, but we're really looking forward to that. After breakfast, it's time to push through some bush tracks until we start to hit sand. Then we begin to leave our comfort zone of what we know, which is life on the water. That's we found the sand, and it's time to let the tire pressure down to 16 psi. We have some u butte equipment to do this, but being novices, we use it all wrong. Jason, with no hope technically, goes back to using the good old stick. We're done. We've proved that we've failed the first step <laughs> in terms of knowing how to use our technology. Technology is a lot smarter than we are. Oh. <laughs> You've, uh... I don't know how you manage it, mate. You've actually got dirt on your face. So I have. <laughs> Good on you. I'm going to try and foolproof today as much as possible, being that there's a couple of fools about to take on some sand tracks. And although we've got a map, we've got a handheld GPS, we did manage to get lost in the sandy sections of an estuary yesterday. So as a backup plan, which should be foolproof, I do have a solar powered GPS section on my watch. And as of now, I'm gonna start. And we are picking up now receiving. So whichever way we end up going, if I wanna backtrack, I'm gonna be able to do it just by looking at my wrist. Good luck. Let's see how we go. I think we deflated the tires just at the right time. Good, good timing, not. Just keep the revs up, man. Yeah, I'll keep them up. <laughs> there was no way that boat's coming in here. Man. Trouble. Uh oh. <laughs> I needed a bigger momentum. Uh, right eye. Now what? Which way? <laughs> Pick a side, any side. Yeah. Do not stop to take pictures. 
<laughs> nice, mate. Yeah, so. yeah, I think um, us getting a boat in here, I reckon we had no chance. It wasn't going to happen. I watched the temperature gauge rise in the car, and we stopped oh, for a quick break to let everything cool down. Why is there purple stuff pouring out of the car? Uh oh. Yeah. Oh. Ah. That's not. A, that's not a good thing. That's boiling. Big time. Oh, that's cooking. Hmm. This is not ideal. Our destination is that way. still somewhat away. Not only that, we've got to get back. I know. And it's um, 40 degrees today. Mm. This is not ideal, Nigel. Not ideal at all. Imagine what it's doing on the inside, if that's on the outside. While we're waiting, we're hydrating. We're in a bit of... Bit of drive. Yes. And you know what? So happy we haven't got a boat behind us right now because we were blowing things up. Yes. Good call. ARB guys. Mate, that's running. It's a little bit hot, but it's back to almost where it normally sits on the temperature gauge. I don't know about you, mate. I'm not going to catch any fish here. Yeah. Are you going to keep going? We're going to have to. Is, there's a few four-wheel drives coming down through here. If we get in a lot of trouble, you may laugh at us, but I'd say we've got mates here. Let's get this bonnet down. Keep going. Oh, oh, good luck. Come on, buddy. Let's get us through this, eh? We push on, keeping a close eye on the temperature, and we are cruising towards the ocean when another solid dune looms ahead. Troubles if we blow an engine up there, mate. We're not getting out of here like in a week. We're doing it. I wasn't nervous before, but I'm getting adrenaline's kicking in now. Momentum's your friend, Nigel. Probably not high speed momentum, but <laughs> momentum. There you go. Oh, there's a bounce. That's the moguls. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Look at you go. <laughs> I've seriously got a treble stuck in my leg. That's okay. Another lesson, don't treble trebles on the dashboard. Yeah, they caught me a bit of cod once. I had to stay in the car. I just uh, felt the other end of those tracks. <laughs> I've got some adrenaline going, guys. All right, look at you go. All these big Sandy. drives out there are going, you're kidding me. This yeah. is easy. It's a Sunday drive, dude. <laughs> look at this. It looks absolutely yes. sensational. It's taking us a little bit longer than we planned. <laughs> you think? Oh, right. wow. It is absolutely beautiful. This was worth it. Oh, yeah. It was worth nearly cooking our car to come in. <laughs> Nine Mile Beach is as pretty from the shore as it was from the boat, and our mind now turns to finding fish. We know the pattern, and the plan is to run the beach and look for bait fish close to the shore that we can cast a lure to. Perfect. There you go, bud. Ah, where is it? Just under here. Yep. Come on. on. Woohoo! Oh yeah! Yeah! Oh yeah! What have we got, Nigel? I don't know what it is. That's pretty cool though. We have a lack of sunlight at the moment, which is making spotting the bait balls hard. The birds and the low light sunnies have gone on, and we can just see the colour changes. It's allowed us to get a lure in the right spot. 
kind of cool catching them off the shore, Jace. <laughs> it's not a monster, but ah, that's a little dart. A dart. Let's get that, Jace. And there's one on the board, Jace. <laughs> little dart. Jason caught a really big one in the boat yesterday in the way of the snub nosed dart. This one is found in a lot of our coastal waters from New South Wales and Queensland. Firm favourite with the beach crew. Yep. Take baits and they take lures. And they don't get huge, but a fantastic little sporting fish. Pretty handy on the plate, but this one is going to go back. We got one on the board. <laughs> yeah. The cloud cover and the fact the bait is holding a bit further out from shore is making it hard to get lures near to fish. But we persist, hoping to get one good shot at a bigger fish. Yep. Oh! You get done. Smoked. That was you a mackie. Bitten off. Bitten off. Oh, they're busting up. Quick, get back in it, Jace. Fish actually oh. busting up right here. Oh, come on, eat. Yeah. Oh. No. Yeah, oh no. Come on, come on. There's predators feeding on this bait ball near the beach. And we're just trying to replicate a fleeing bait fish in the way of a little metal slug known as a twisty. And just trying to entice one of them. Jason's been bitten off. I've had three or, three or four bites already, so it means there might be a school of mackerel in there. we just got to get one to stick. Oh, there's one, a little one. Wow, starter aggressive. Very aggressive fish. There's such a variety of predatory action going on right against the beach. We've got predators pushing a big school of bait right up tight. For one reason, the bait can't go any further than the shoreline, so the predators are sitting on the other side and getting stuck into it. And there's mackerel out there, there's probably small tuna, there could be queen fish, and there's even these little normal beach going predators that dart. How fierce is that? It shows you how aggressive a fish can be to take on something half its size. With the afternoon light getting lower and our continued failure to get close enough to bigger fish, we decide to call it quits and start heading for home. And that is the end of our beach session and I think maybe all we've proved is we're as good on the shore as we are at four wheel driving. But two different days, you know what they say, Jace. You can't catch them every day, night. No, you can't. Thankfully we caught them yesterday and I think in line with that, let's four wheel drive out of here and I'll cook you dinner. Sounds, actually sounds Sweet lip. Good. Sweet lip, lock me in. Heading back to camp, we reflect on how great the fishing is in this part of the world. And also how much we've had to learn about four wheel driving into fishing spots. So far the trip has been a success and we already begin planning the next leg of our adventure. But first, we have to learn how to use yet another flash bit of gear. That is one cool tool. What a way to end an adventure to a place. We picked out of the map and went, let's go fishing there. Try and get four drives and boats in. We've seen the highs and the lows of Nine Mile. And in our travels, we came across a local that said, just a few clicks that way, is a creek, a freshwater system that if you can get a boat into, apparently the fishing is really good. And I think we should start planning. Yes, we should, since we finished this. Yes. Oh, too good. Mate, you were right. That is very, very good. Okay. We're back. I can help you with that. You can? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We superseded your technology. With a, with a stick? With a stick. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no worries. There you go. Wind it on. Oh, what'd you do then? What'd you do? Pull that knob there. Ah. Oh. That was the part. We got that. two out of three, right? Got just two got the key bit at the end. <laughs> yeah, thanks for your help, buddy. Thanks, you man. just broke my stick. Oh, that's terrible. Well, that's that's a fine and a whole new one. Let's go. In our next episode, we tackle stage two of an off-road adventure. We head further west in a bid to chase fish from the fresh to the salt. Life heats up as our car woes continue and a bushfire threat becomes very real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yes, good fish, good fish, good fish. Oh. 
Get the net, get the net, get the net. For details on all the equipment we used in today's show, head to our website, afn.com.au, follow the links to the fishing show, and we'll tell you exactly what we used. And to stay up to date with our latest adventures, head to our Facebook page, AFN Fishing and Outdoors, and you'll find out exactly where we are and when. It's Bill Classen here from The Fishing Show, and if you like this instructional video and want to learn more, it's simple. Go to fishingshowtv.com.au and see a whole host of additional videos.